<clears throat> okay, one of the things we're going to talk about here is wave theory. <clears throat> we need to kind of put it to a side. Because <clears throat> uh, wave theory, of course, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take Newtonian physics here <clears throat> and uh, move on with the idea that <clears throat> atoms and particles of atoms are moving like bullets throughout the universe. And uh, <clears throat> the wave theory is very interesting. Uh, and, and we definitely see a lot of it, but we it's not going to be applicable to understanding the universe, of course, and understanding the events that are taking place. Okay, where do we get wave theory from? Magnets. <laughs> and living near water bodies of water like kids we throw rocks into uh, rivers, first thing you do as a kid. And you see this, you know, this uh, and these lines of events, or circles, <clears throat> And the pond is the radiate all the way from all the you know short and everything well the, <clears throat> caused by a rock hitting the molecules wave theory we're not trying to totally disregard wave theory everything we see in the universe is important but we must put it in perspective the reason <clears throat> the wave theory takes uh, of course takes this so um, takes take is so magical and, and seductive is that we also see it in magnets when you you know take metal filings in high school or whatever you did this at you took these medical filings and you uh, used a magnet to run them back and forth on a piece of paper you know <laughs> good for Ouija tricks too um, you, you saw this event and then from there you could easily connect the dots because we did that as kids especially the real smart kids you know they could do that real good <laughs> But um, um, <clears throat> so we get this wave theory effect uh, from all of these events, and they're very strong. It's a very strong image, and very very uh, 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 susceptible to mathematics. You know, and, and it looks good, but uh, it, it's counterproductive. Uh, <clears throat> and why is it counterproductive? Because that's not what's going on. <laughs> it's like any event. You're going to have this wave. Uh, 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 of like uh, knocking down the domino chips and as they fall down and move out there you could connect, connect the dots between each each of these falling domino chips and you'd have this visual picture and uh, this visual picture is very good it's a domino chip that's falling okay that's the important thing we're going to talk about that before we worry too much about it. and of course you know people who are trained in physics they're mathematicians they want to do this in a calibration format, believing that we're going to explain the universe with math. Well, math doesn't explain the universe. <clears throat> it quantitates the universe. We can count the universe, but it's not going to give us a fundamental understanding. First of all, uh, we don't have a math application for motion, to tell you the truth. <laughs> we have a math, mass, a math application for the events once motion is in effect. <laughs> That's kind of like, I mean, it'd be the same equivalent as uh, uh, trying to get a math application for God. <laughs> uh, that may not work, of course. Okay, uh, although it'll come down to a, a calculation, a, a, an addition, a subtraction, an accumulation. But right now, we're, we got to get a, a definition. We have to have a language of it. We have to have a thought process before we start uh, quantitating, okay? Uh, sorry about that for people who like math. <laughs> You're coming. Your time is coming. But right now, we, we have to get the third leg of the of the non-mathematical portion of this, what we're talking about. You will you will calculate it. You will give us great service. But first, we, we have to come up with a definition. And, and the first one, Newton, very, light, very well pointed out, was things are in motion. And then, of course, for every action, there's a reaction, and there math jumps right on in. And, and then we, his calculus was was fundamentally based on a relationship. That is, the relationship of how the Earth moves around the Sun. It's both spinning, of course, and 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 in uh, an orbital plane. Well, all math from there, or what we call motion of math, the math of of uh, speed, of distance 
time and all these things. Uh, the fundamentals of calculus then are based on one and only one fundamental relationship. And that is everything we're going to do in math is going to be related to how the earth moves around the sun. And that's going to be our mini our mini relationship, just like when you do ratios, you know, this is a ratio problem. Every speed that we're going to talk about, and this is where Einstein, of course, jumped in with the relativity, is going to be based on that relationship. Uh, and, and it's a ratio. And as, as you learn in math, you're going to learn to do ratios. Uh, like in a model, or a guy who's making a, a makes this small model, and then he wants a bigger portion of it, <laughs> and they've got to, of course, relate that and with a ratio, like an architect, from one size to a larger size. But it's a ratio, and that starts with that model. Well, all our math and calculus is based on the speed of the Earth, or I should say, the distance of the Earth takes in, a, in what we would call a distance around the sun and we're measuring distances and then from that measure of distance we jump in with what we call is a time okay now the reason wave theory doesn't work is first of all it's based on the observation of 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 trying to tie motion together okay connect the dots is what i would call it and they're connecting the dots that don't exist Yes, the movement of a particular item, the little lead shaving, or an atom being flung out into space, or a molecule of water or air flowing around, moves in a certain direction because it had a collision. And it has internal resistance, or what we call inertia, because it has spin. Okay. Those events are going to take place. Now, if you, if you wish to connect the different events after those two move out from the, you know, the application of force or the collision, and they have motion, of course, that would be interesting, but not necessary. It's not necessary because what we're studying here is why the damn thing in the first place <laughs> moves. Once it moves on, <laughs> well, that's, a, I guess you could start doing all kinds of calculations. What we're trying to fundamentally get here is why does a particle move before it moves with any other particle, okay? And there's where wave theory breaks down. Oh, I guess you could jump into it and say there's wave theory in the particle itself. But, but let's just take what we're first fundamentally having to understand is why a particle on its own moves through a given space. And then we can get into wave theory and we can get into connect the dots and things like that, okay? Um, we're going to really cover a lot on this. This is uh, really important. <laughs>